The one single target skill I think has gone under the radar as far as SSF hardcore bossing goes is Explosive Trap. I think this thing has a higher DPS ceiling than Seismic Trap, although a much more variable and low DPS floor. It's something I'm really thinking about running in the upcoming boss event, and it has a really unique progression pattern as far as gear goes in SSF. The key mechanics that I think make Explosive Trap better include alternate ailments through a Secrets of Suffering Scepter, the use of Bear Trap, which only scales hit-based traps, Herald of Ash scaling for both spell damage and fist to fire damage, and the Saboteur node Explosive Experts combined with Skitterbots and Infernal Legion. When you compare this thing to the solo cell phone hardcore versions of Poison Seismic Trap, there's a couple of key benefits. Firstly, you get more gem flexibility because you don't need to run a second 4 link for your Exsanguinate for clear. Explosive Trap actually clears fine on its own, as long as you do a Cluster Trap swap. Secondly, you don't need to run Withering Step. Now, I tend to run Withering Step for a lot of builds because it's really strong. Things like Nightblade, any sort of Chaos Dot build. The thing about Withering Step, though, is that it precludes the use of Frost Blink because you actually never have charges for a single use movement skill. As far as cooldown travel skills go, right now I think Frost Blink is actually the strongest one as long as you can pair it with another movement skill. Frost Blink is also really important for this build because it actually increases your DPS on boss encounters. What I tend to do while playing this is name lock the boss. In other words, I grab the boss name with my cursor and I start throwing explosive traps. When I want to move, I don't let go of my right click, which is throwing explosive traps. I simply move my cursor and then Frost Blink somewhere else. Because Frost Blink is an instant skill, it doesn't actually stop the throw of explosive traps. In other words, it really, really helps to increase your DPS uptime. Now, it seems a little bit risky at first, but as long as you know the play patterns of a lot of the endgame bosses, this is actually a really safe and high DPS way to play. Ultimately, with some gear scaling, I think this can be quite a bit stronger than Seismic at the very high end. The Helmet Enchant is really powerful, and the ability to scale more deeply into crit because of alternate ailments, grabbing things like a Circle of Anguish for more Held of Ash scaling, possibly getting Marilene's Fallacy if this drops, which gives you a ton of spell crit multi at the cost of losing crit chance, which will be capped anyway if you get enough brittle chance, the option to scale both levels to fizz and fire gems for more flexibility, and just generally being able to use a really really big pre-stack give Explosive Trap in my mind a really achievable ceiling, especially if this race drags on for a little longer. We still don't know how hard the new bosses are going to be, and that's really going to determine what are the best builds. But this, unironically, is a candidate to be one of them. I don't think it's on the same tier as DD Ignite, but I do think it's a step above a lot of the other builds, especially because the gear progression is fairly flexible. The tree I use should look fairly similar to a crit seismic tree, other than not having to grab duration nodes. I also have to path down to Winter Spirit to get some of my conversion. Now, there's other ways to get more conversion, to get full alley conversion, things like conversion on gloves, implicit on gloves, etc. But I think this is the most reliable way to do it, and it makes your gearing much easier early on. I also go for Fizz to Cold conversion because I want to get Brittle. Because I'm not using something like Leadership's Price, I actually need to deal cold damage for Brittle to apply. I'm running a single large cluster. This is a Fizz cluster, but you have flexibility in terms of running a Fire cluster as well. And this is a Trap Medium. But the other cluster to look for is a crit medium, something that's giving you both crit chance, ailment effect from critical strikes, and then things like double damage, crit multi, crit chance. However, I'd really only use that medium if I was running Marilene's Fallacy, which is a fairly rare drop. The skill trap setup is really straightforward. You have a six link explosive trap setup. You'll want to run a cluster trap over swift assembly while you're mapping, and this will make it pretty consistent. You can still run conch effect, Personally, I'd probably go NKOE as well, just to give you a really good mapping experience. Your single target is always fine to kill T16 bosses. In fact, even killing Guardians is fairly easy on like day one, day two gear um, in hardcore with cluster traps. I always run the Holy Trinity of Auras, Termination Grace Defiance banner, and then I run a Castle Damage Taken Molten Shell, Increase Duration, and Life Tap. Everything on this build is Life Tap except for a single skill, whether that's Wave Conviction or Frost Blink, and this lets me get Arcane Surge. My Wave Conviction is here, and I'm running it with an Assassin's Mark, which is really a big boost to your damage. You can see that gives me some like 24% damage. And if I wasn't crit capped, it'd be giving me even more. Herald of Ash is the most insane thing. Herald of Ash gives me 32.5% damage. That's pretty much as good as a 50% aura for most builds. I'm also not using Circles of Anguish, which can scale this up to being like a 50 or 60 or even 70% more multiplier for your build. And you can see my current setup, I'm using Frostblade with Arcane Search. I've also mentioned that you need to use Skitterboss with Infernal Legion. Now, some people like to run this with Unbound Ailments, but I don't think it's possible even with Socket Flex build and Reservation. As it currently stands, it's possible for me to take a bit more Reservation and drop some like Ashes of the Stars and still run all of my auras. But that Infernal Legion is really important because it gives you 40% crit multi, which you can't get otherwise. Because I'm a Secrets of Suffering build, I can't ignite things, so I need another source of burning damage, and this is from Infernal Legion. There's really only one deterministic thing you need to go for on this, and that's this Alternating Scepter. It will give you the ability to apply alternate ailments, which includes Scorch, a Minus Resistance modifier, Sap, 
a generic damage reduction multiplier, and Brittle, which is a base crit ailment. All of these are really, really strong. And this comes from heisting. And yes, you will need to heist to get this. But with the new Atlas tree and the fairly common drop rate of the scepter, it's not that hard to do. Additionally, you do need to heist in some sort of race SF setting because you'll need things like oils, you'll need things like cluster jewels for this build, you also need catalysts. I think going for the Scepter adds something like 2-3 to three hours to your total gear progression. I think going for the Scepter adds something like 3 hours to your total gear progression, but you're also getting other things at the same time, so I don't think it's that bad. On this build, I opt for an offensive shield as opposed to a defensive one. Now you can go for something like Suppression, Life on an Evasion base, but I think it's much more effective to get a ton of damage on this. The shield that I'm using here is 16% damage, but you could also go for things like Spell Crit, again if you're running Marilyn's Fauci, Double Damage, Fire's Chaos, there's other mods that are really good and really offensive. I use an Essence of Loathing to craft the helmet to get more Reservation, Otherwise, it's just life suppression, and that will follow for most of the gear. Um, the body armor wants Gravisius mod, and the gloves do want at least one source of conversion, whether this is crafted or on an implicit. You can also look for something like Unnerve on Hit for your Implicit. It's something like 8% more damage for this build. Boots are totally flexible, although you really want to run Lab. You either want to look for the increased crit chance if you haven't crit recently, or the damage penetrates if you haven't killed recently. Both of these work really well with traps, because as long as you're playing a hit-based trap, it won't count as you having killed recently. It'll be your traps that have killed things recently. Ashes of the Stars can be replaced with any other amulet. You could look for a plus one fire, plus one fizz amulet. You could look for multi on amulet. You could look for Marilyn's Fallacy, which is a huge DPS increase. Or you could even go for omniscience and change your entire build. It really depends, and this is a really flexible build. Depending on what I get in this race, I'll want to change things around. Both of my rings are flexible, but I do think you want to go for mini endurance charges. After dying to so much physical damage during the gauntlet, I really value physical mitigation right now, and frankly, this helps out with resistances a little bit as well. Your belt looks for trap throwing speed, and there's a lot of flexibility here as well. The flasks are pretty straightforward, and I've already gone through the cluster jewels. But you can see that other than the one scepter, which you can pretty much deterministically get after a couple of hours of heisting, everything else is fairly flexible gear. It's really generic SF hard core gearing. One thing to note is that because Explosive Trap has many, many small hits, and my average hit is 100k in this POV, which isn't tiny, but it's not actually huge rend game bosses, your alt ailments aren't actually that strong. I was averaging between 4 to 6% brittle, depending on the type of endgame boss, which is still fine to crit cap me with this current setup. But if you have less crit chance, you will want to have some sort of ailment scaling, whether that's from Cluster Jewels or from the tree itself. This will really be more multipliers to both your damage and your defenses if you get any source of lightning damage for sap. <clears throat> Getting Fizz Conversion to Lightning is the way to do this, and you can basically apply 6 different kinds of ailments to enemies, although you will need to have high enough base damage to really capitalize on these things. So to conclude, I think I should be really candid. Do I believe this is better than DD Ignite? No. I think Detonate Dead Ignite is the single best build by quite a bit right now as far as boss rushing goes. You don't need to level your gems at all, your gearing is really straightforward, and in non gauntlet settings, you're able to run Flesh Offering, which actually makes DD Ignite the single fastest solo mapper in early progression. It simply has no gear requirements and an insane amount of attack speed and fantastic clear. But I do think this build can compete on that second tier, with something like Poison Seismic, which is really insane still. In softcore, this will definitely feel better early on. You can get a lot of your damage really quickly, and it won't matter if you die. But because the DPS is so much more variable, in an HD setting, I'm not entirely sure this will be possible. During my testing, I know that this, with optimal play, is something like 50-60% to 60 better than playing Seismic early on. Frankly, even though I've tested it, I just don't know if it's as quick as the other builds for early progression. But that doesn't really matter to me, because I'd rather die playing this in the race than die of cringe playing DD Ignite.